So joining me today in the ring, I have a very exciting guest, my good friend, Perry Shake Strayton, mm -hmm. who is an Olympian and a 400 meter hurdler. Correct. So I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> I want to share your story. It's such an inspiration to look at where you started and what you've achieved. So first of all, congratulations on your fantastic achievements. Thank so you. I know you were born and raised in East London. London. Yep. Tell me about how that was like. Yeah, so obviously first time when you told me the address and where it was all happening, I was yeah. like, oh, Bethnal Green, I know that area. <laughs> obviously um, born and raised um, in Poplar, uh, so literally down the road and trained down the road at Mile End. Mm -hmm. um, went to school here in East London um, and that was kind of where I got introduced into athletics or sports. Mm. Um, I was that child who was very keen um, when it came to PE. Um, Were you gifted in sports? Uh, I I probably was, yeah, but I didn't see it as that because I wasn't at a young age winning the races. Mm. You know, I wasn't always coming first at sports day, but I really enjoyed, you know, anything that involved running. So if it was knockdown, ginger, mm. um, run out, that was me. You know, I was like, yeah, 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 everyone and me on their team. Mm. So obviously I showed a bit of speed from an early age, mm. but we talk about speed. I never actually got introduced um, into athletics for my speed. I was more a long distance runner. So I took part in like the cross country runs, um, the mini marathon, um, which is like 2.6 miles. Um, yeah, so I feel like running maybe was just born within me. I mean, my mm -hmm. dad, um, he had a running background. Um, mm. I think it was only up till maybe he was a teenager. Um, and yeah, my mum, she's not a runner. She's more into swimming. Do you think that's what inspired you to get into sports? Well, because you had an athletic family already. Yes, I feel like a lot of my um, family members were very much competitive, very mm. sporty. Um, they was more into football. Mm. Um, that was not my interest at all. That's what I, that is what I actually used to see on the screen, football. Wow. But I had no interest at all in football. Um, I never watched athletics growing up, no Olympic Games. I kind of discovered and found out more about the sport as I kind of got introduced into it and actually become a member of the team. And this was in secondary school for you or prior to that? So primary school is when I feel like um, I entered my first race. Wow. Yeah, so that was what like, I say, year six. So what, to 10? Ten, wow. 10. So coming towards the end, I would say, um, of primary school. But I must say it wasn't seen as cool. It'd be mm. like being an athlete wasn't cool, running wasn't cool, whether it be down to just the activity itself, mm. um, who wants to sweat, or the trainers that I would wear. Mm. I'd be like, yeah, that's not cool to be so what what doing. what really inspired you to get in? What was it about athletics that made you feel, even though it's not cool, at that particular time, I still want to do it? Um, I think it had to do with... My coach, mm -hmm. um, very supportive, very encouraging. Um, and then I did like the fact that um, we used to travel. It may have just been around the UK, but it was something different to what I was mm -hmm. used to, just, you know, being around my local area. Um, you know, I'd get a packed lunch. Yeah, you know. the adventure, yeah, the excitement. Like, yeah, and I, I'm awake. Not that I didn't like being at home. I did, but I just felt like, Oh, wow, this is cool. And then when you mm. start to win as well, you're like, okay, so I'm actually quite good at this. Mm. I'm going to keep going. And I think that was it as well. So there was a few Absolutely. things that kind of contributed to why I continued mm. um, and took it quite serious um, because I never knew athletes. I didn't know you could make a career out of being mm. an athlete. You just loved what I you did. I just loved it. Exactly Absolutely. that. Yeah. I'm just fascinated by a story because girl from East London goes to this major platform to the Olympics. How did that feel for you when you first got selected for the Olympics? Because I know there was some controversy around that. Talk us through that. Um, I mean, I never aspired to go to Olympic Games. I'll no. just tell you that, no. Um, it was the case of, okay, I may be prior to it, and I say prior, 
um, maybe four years before, so 2008, mm. um, I went to the championships, the British yeah. championships, and I won. I won the British. I won the British trials for the Olympics in 2008, mm. um, but I never ran the time, the qualifying time. Mm. So if you don't run a qualifying time, they tend to not want to select you. But sometimes you have an A standard, which is the mm. one they want to get. Then there's a B standard, sure. and I had the B standard. So. Uh, me and my coach wanted to get the A standard. So I went around kind of competing. Unfortunately, I didn't get the qualifying time. However, there was a group that they took out, um, Great Britain took out, and it was me and two other athletes. And we went out um, to Beijing mm. and we got a feel and experience of yeah. the village, you know, being in the stadium. We actually went to their warm up, their camp as well, because mm. you usually go to a camp before you actually go to a major championship. And I remember sitting in the uh, um, stadium in the seats and I was like I'm never going to be sitting in these seats again I need to be competing okay. that was that was my attitude I was like no. that was your turning point yeah you just thought Hang yeah a minute, I don't deserve to sit here I should be up there performing so the hunger came from that and uh so it took you know the next four years it was going to be in London so that's when I feel like I started to take it a bit more serious as well mm. um because I thought okay Coach is believing in me. I need to believe in me. Mm. Home again, the Olympics. Yeah, we're going to go for it. So the build up every yeah. year, I kept improving, running yeah. faster. So the dream yeah. became more of a reality when you start seeing the results. Mm. Sometimes if you're not seeing that you're running certain times, you're like, mm, where's this really going? It's one but, step at a time, isn't it? The more you kind of conquer your fears, eliminate one post at, yeah. at a time, you realise, wait a minute, I'm getting closer and closer to my goal. Yep, and that could be running faster, lifting heavier, yeah. um, you know, just getting stronger. Um, you're at this meet, next meet. You minute. just have to start, isn't it? It's so true what they say, because I remember when I first walked into this gym, I didn't think I'm going to become a world champion. I just thought, I love this. It allows me to be present. It takes away my stresses. Yeah. It gives me a focal point. It gives me life skills. And all of a sudden, I think, hang on a minute, I can be better than this girl. Yeah, right. You and start... the next one, yep. and the next one, because I think... <laughs> I've got more. I've got yeah. more mental strength. And these are things that you develop on your journey. You don't yes. start off with that. Nope. But you build and build. And also losses, I'll say, help you with that as well. Um, it doesn't always go, like, straight. It doesn't no. always... You don't always get the performances that you want. Um, decisions may be made and you're like, nah, I didn't like that decision. But that is character building. Stronger. That makes you stronger. Yes. And it's so, part of the journey. Yeah. See who you are. Yep. And that's exactly what it did. So, mm. you know, when it came to 2012, I wanted so much. You know, my expectations were very, very high. Yeah. Um, yes, I made it to the Olympic Games, but to me, that wasn't good enough. I wanted more. I wanted that medal, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I, I did try. Unfortunately, I didn't get a medal. But when I look and reflect back now, I'm like, no, that is an achievement. 100%. Now people would love to say, they went to Olympic Games, represent their country. Not many people get to say that. Mm. And, you know, to say that I did that, yes, we came, what, fourth in the relay. That was from mm. an upgrade. Yeah. We, we actually finished fifth, but later on down the line, yeah. they found that was, um, someone had been done for drugs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then I didn't make it for, as an individual. Um, I didn't make it through to the final, should I say, for the, my individual. And that hurt, but I still had to pick myself up and run, run that relay. Yeah. Yeah. And in the following year, gosh, it was like all that anger, upset was channeled into my 2013. I was like, no, I'm coming. And you I'm coming. came back with I'm a coming. gold. Yeah. Yes. You know, so. Uh, but that was yeah. a learning. That was a process of you becoming what you needed to win that gold. Yep. Yes. That's that was setting the stage for you to know. Well, this it's, it's millimeters. It's yep. fractions, it's yep. little details that make all the difference between a gold and a silver and silver and a bronze. Yep. And you representing the country. Yep. Do you feel proud of yourself? Yes. I'll be honest with you, mm. at the time when I didn't make the final for the, um, at the Olympic Games, I wasn't proud at all, Roxana. Mm. Um, I, I don't know, I, think, I feel like I had so much expectation of myself and I feel like the country did too. Yeah. Remember, I was in the Big race. Stadiums. The race before I actually competed at Olympics was at Crystal Palace. I won that race. It was a Diamond League. I ran something, my, my PB. 
So from that time that I'd run, people were now like, this girl's going to get a gold medal. Mm. And I started to believe it. So the newspapers were talking about me. I, really, I had loads of sponsors at the time as well. So, you know, they were all getting mm. excited, excited, you know, getting, yeah. oh, yeah, pros and do big things. And maybe I was think, doing it more for others and not concentrating on myself yeah. that may have kind of distracted you, know, distracted you. you distracted me. But yeah, I was like, no, everyone wants to see a medal and I don't have a medal. So I didn't feel I'd done good enough. I thought I let my family down, um, whether they were tuned in or they came to the stadium to watch. I just feel like, oh, I've let my coach down. That's how I felt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have invested in me. Um, but through reflection and look at the grand scheme of things, I'm very much holding my head up high Absolutely. and like, Yes. Absolutely. You know, Perry, I remember because I used to go to the track and um, train with your coach, in fact, yeah. Chris Jar. And for me, it was an addition to my own training. But I remember feeling so inspired by you because you gave us all hope. What you achieved was incredible. The fact that someone from a local, um, you know, East London, mm. growing up with the same resources that we're all kind of exposed to we're not from you know silver spoon background mm -hmm. we're all immigrants um you know ethnic minority coming yeah. here in a country where we're just trying to survive and then i see someone like perry running the fact that you made it to those heights already inspired me and honestly i'm sure i speak for all women out there who look up to you as a role model and feel that you know what, it's not even about that gold medal. It's about the journey you've yeah. taken in life that's going to give people strength and character. And look at you, you've done amazing and you should be proud of yourself. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Because it's funny, like, you say that because I will get some people come up to me and be like, uh, yeah, like people may be in prison. They were watching me. Mm. They're like... Just knowing that you were from the same area as me, that yeah. just made yeah. like my day just kind of light up, you know. And they were like, they really loved, they like p random people. Yeah. We like, nah, you've done well, you've done us proud. Even when I used to come back from competitions, people mm. maybe see me at a train station and be like, oh, you've done well. Do you know what I mean? You know it's what like, it is, it's your environment because when you're exposed to lots of limitations, you don't realize the fact that you've you've broken over so many hurdles. <laughs> Literally. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and overcome so many challenges, which we will talk about. That in itself gives so many people, wow, if she can do it, we can at least try. So, And it's funny because hmm. like, people may say, who was your inspiration growing up? Hmm. Um, I never had a sports person that I looked up to. <gasps> Same. I never had that. Oh Roxana. my God. You're speaking my language right now. Yeah, there was no one that I was like, you yeah, to be. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like you. If anything, it was a case of, um, I would say my mum, just mm. her hard work and ethic, not that she was a sports person, yeah. but the fact that she was providing for me and my brother yeah. and she wouldn't let us, if there was a struggle, we wouldn't know. You can't give up and you can't so, let yourself down. What gives you that winning mindset? Who? what? I just, I just love the feeling that it brings me the joy. I feel like that is what it is. I feel like what you put in is what you're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I know I dedicated a lot to, that, to my sport yeah. um, and I did get a lot out of it. Do you feel like that's what you cultivated from a young age? Yes. Um, Roxanne, I'm very competitive. And I love it. <laughs> I say that as well. I, had a, I have a cousin, sorry, um, and she, was, she played football. And uh, the family would make so much fuss about her, yeah. And just hear her name, oh, she done well. Or oh, she did well at school as well. And in my head, I'm like, I want some of that praise, appraisal. Yeah. So for, for, for me to get that, I'm going to have to do well at something. Yeah. So I feel like that, that's what happened. It's not that I was, um, I was jealous it of any way. Jealous. You saw how. But I saw the joy it brought my family. And I just thought. I, don't, I didn't even actually say to myself, I'm going to be a sports person. Mm. Whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to work hard at it. I mean, the best, educational, yeah. edu for, for schooling, um, you know, I wasn't the brightest child, but I tell you what, I got good grades. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I worked hard. I would go to the Arsenal School Club, get extra help. Yeah. I didn't care if it was seen as not cool or anything. 
um, if I don't understand something, I'm going to ask questions. And yeah. that was me. Like, I would do the extra kind of work because I was later on down in the... Um, at university, mm. I got diagnosed with like, dyslexia. I didn't mm. know that during my primary school. I didn't know it through secondary school. So I just kind of yeah, got, same, f- same got through me. it. You know, so I, sport I had no problem with, you know mm. what I mean? And, and that was always feeling and stuff. Yeah. Because when they got technical, Oksana, mm. what's your hurdle pattern the show? Don't ask me that. It's all by rhythm. You know? <laughs> I was very, it's I was, instinct. Yeah, I feel it's like, instinct. I think mine was very different in terms of like some people are like, yeah, I've done this many strides. No, sorry, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't, I couldn't ask you, you that. You know what it is? Once you get to that peak level, it's about intuition and instinct. Yeah. Everything else is rehearsed. Yeah. And you can't win gold medals with rehearsals. Trust me, exactly. <laughs> you it's know? knowing how to adapt and seek opportunities when they appear and knowing that. Yep, and I feel like that is perfect when it came to the, the final race before going to the Olympics. Mm. Oksana, it was raining. Oh, my God. Pissing down. I trained in the rain and the snow. Like, Chris prepared me for all weather conditions. So all the girls, they've come from, like, America, from the Caribbean, Russia. With a nice tan. Yeah. So they're like, this is cold. And I'm like... I'm ready well, for it. I'm ready for this because I know these conditions, you know? I've got less items of clothing on. I've not got my hat on. I've not got my waterproofs on. I'm in my crop top and shorts, and I'm going to do the thing. Hmm. And that's what I did. Went and ran the race, because, yeah. Why, why did you change from... Like you said, you started off with long distance. What gave you that change in direction to becoming a hurdler rather than sticking with the long distance? So my coach was very good at identifying what I was good and what I wasn't good at, mm-hmm. what, we, what my weaknesses were. So we'd work on my weaknesses. Like speed was there, but we're going to work on it a bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, Perry's got some lungs on her, but we need to work on it. Okay. And I feel like he was very strategic in a sense of 400 meter hurdles, there's no one coming up. Mm. So get her to be doing yes. the hurdles. So like, you see opportunity, you, you go for to. it. And I, I wasn't that um, that athlete that would be like questioned too much. So then it's like, oh, why are we doing this? I'm doing that. I had faith in my coach. Also, you wasn't afraid of the challenge because nope. hurdling is a different kind of beast. Yep. yep. Some people are like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Exactly. Or, I'm like, like, you know, break my ankle. Yep. Or they like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that distance run. Uh, I'm not. Me? I'm like, come on, Bring what are we doing? On. Bring it on. <laughs> and I'm going to try my hardest. And that was and my mentality. Did. Yep. And yep. you did. What has been your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge as an athlete was definitely injury. Mm. Um, I sustained a really bad injury in 2013. So for 2013... The early stage was kind of lovely. Obviously, we, we got indoor um, champion for the 400 meters and the um, the relay. Um, but at the outdoor championships, I, I actually hurt my knee. I say hurt. Mm. The knee was written off, you know, and it took four years for me to get back. Wow. Um, when it happened to me, I was like... Um, uh, yeah, I'll be fine. But everyone's like, oh, I'm so sorry, so sorry. I'm like, why? Are you? In my head, I'm like, why are you apologising for? Because I'm going to be back in two weeks. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's fine. It's, this is not that deep. Like, calm down. Yeah. So then I had to have surgery. And then when the surgeon was saying, oh, we've not, we've not seen something like this before. Mm. Stop coming. I'm like, so that means you don't have a lot of research on it. Yeah. You know, and I made a joke. I was like, oh, I'm going to get pregnant. I've, I've recover mm. and Chris like no you're gonna be back way before that yeah, yeah. but it wasn't it took four years four years yeah tore my eight tore my PCL and damaged the cartilage in my knee yeah so it was a lot of rehab a lot of recovery um yeah and what was your mental um you know, mentally what I was you, my... emotionally listen I was in a bad place mm. um because the world just goes on. Yes. When you're in, the world just goes on. Everyone just gets on with life. You know, athletes are still there competing. I didn't like watching athletics. No. I'm not interested. And I said to myself, a lot of these performances, I can beat you. I'm so better than you, but I'm here on my, on my couch. In four doing years. My, my rehab. I'm like, no. So I kind of fell out of love mm-hmm. of the sport. I was like, yeah, I'm not interested. Um, mm. And then I knew of my friend who had a knee injury. Mm. And I was like, she got back. And because she got back, yeah. I can get back. Yeah. 
So that was, that's what kept me going. I said, every, um, every time I was making improvements, I was like, yep, we're going in the right direction, we're going in the direct, yep. direct direction. Yep. And I got yep. knocked back, got knocked back down, had to go for another in, um, surgery um, to my leg because um, that happened, that, oh God, that was an incident that happened in South Africa. Mm. I actually got chased. Oh my Imagine God. my first time getting back to running, I got chased. These guys tried to rob me for my headphones, Oksana. No. No joke. Oh my God, yes. Yes. So, you know, I was, they came with a pair of shears and it's like. Did they know who you were? They didn't know who it was because I ran. <laughs> I, I was like, you are not getting are my headphones. Me? But then it was detrimental to my knee and then oh. I just had another, more surgery. I was like, oh God, why didn't I just hand them the headphones? You yeah, know what I mean? It's not worth it. It's your really injury. not worth it. No. You know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> lesson but, um, learned. <laughs> lesson learned. Yeah. But, yeah, was, that long-term injury I had was hard. It mm. really was. So, when I'm able to, like, work out and do certain things now, um, you, you know. You appreciate it. Oh, trust me. When a certain part of your body stops working, you realise, oh, I really relied on it. You know, don't take these things for granted. granted. So, mm. when I'm in a good place and health-wise, I'm yeah. going to try and do everything. Yeah. You know? What advice would you give to your younger self? What advice would I give to my younger self? Um, gosh. I would say, like, whew. I would have said to myself as well, prepare yourself for the life after. Mm. After athletics, yeah. that's right. Yeah. You know, it doesn't last for a lifetime. As much yeah. as we, we think that, it's yeah. not going to happen. It's going to be a time when you have to hang up your spikes, mm. but be prepared for that moment. Yeah. And um, encounter, learn to encounter the highs and the lows throughout the journey. Yes, yeah. right, exactly. Mm. Take, take it in because it's all a learning lesson. Yeah. Um, another thing what I tell myself, I said, maybe I should have, um, I don't know, been a bit more friendly. So. Yeah, I don't think I was friendly at all. As well, maybe a, uh, that gave you that edge. Oh, trust to me, Xana. I said, you're not, you're not seeing, you're not going to see this, you know, mm. lively, Perry. Like, I, my competitors would just be like, I wouldn't even say hello. <laughs> I wouldn't do eye contact because I thought, if you would see that side of me, they'd be like, yeah, she's a pushover. We yeah, can. Yeah. No, no, no. I was that athlete like this. You're focused. Focus. Don't come talk to me. <laughs> The most you get after is congratulations, you know, I'll shake your hand. But other than that, it's like I never built them relationships yeah. whilst I was competing. You know what? That's interesting you say that because I look back at my Thai boxing career and I think I was the same. Like you meet so many people mm -hmm. and I never made any really strong relationships nope. with anyone. Apart from my coach and my immediate people, because I think it takes a certain level of discipline yeah. to do what you need to do. You can't come and speak to everyone in the gym. Energy. Nope. It's energy. Yep. You need to be focused. Even when I'm in the ring, people want to say hi. I'm like, don't give me eye contact. Yeah. I need to think about what I'm doing next. Yep. Leave yeah. me. Leave me in my zone. Yep. That, I was, so, everyone would always would know me. I was always with my coach. Always. Yeah. yeah. We have our, our dinner, our lunch together, you know, mm. training. Because we got on so well. And, and you know, we had a common goal. Though. We had a common goal, you know. Exactly. He wants to do well and he wants to see me doing well. Yeah. So everybody else just used to get yeah. Hi. You had the same vision yes. that drove you both to the same direction. <laughs> but I don't think we enjoyed the moments. We always wanted more. That is another mm. thing. For how, how did you deal with failures and setbacks? What got you through those moments? Um, I think, again, I think it was Chris. He was very good at like, Perry, we've done the work. It will come when it's, when, when it, when it's time to come out, that performance will come out. Um, my boyfriend at the time was very good as well, kind of yeah, giving me that support. People. Yeah. Um, yeah, but me personally, I was like, mm -mm. I was very much hard on myself. Yeah. That was only for like, what, a two days or something. Like, okay. We go again, yeah. you know, um, put on my fresh outfit, go training for that. All the hair was done. So I'm like, you know what? We go again. I that was the business. Right. <laughs> you know, I love my thing. If I look good, I'm going to feel I'm good. I'm going to perform good. Yeah, I love it. So I took it. It's like, all right, whatever. That's what's happened. Yeah, yeah. We go again. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm built to win, basically. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it just shows that if you have good mentors, 
Yeah. And taking the time to reflect rather than letting that one setback define you. You're not yeah. letting that. You're looking at all the accomplishments saying, wait a minute, I've been here before. I've done X, Y, and Z already. Let me look at, let me appreciate that. And that's what helped you get through it. Yeah. Dancing on Ice. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about how that came about. So Dancing on Ice returned back in 2017. Mm. And uh, my agent was like, well, they're selecting people. Do you yeah. want to be a part of it? Now, remember, I've come back from a serious injury, Roxana. Yeah. I've made my comeback for the world. I think I was at the World Championships when I got mm. the call. Um, I hadn't competed yet. I was going to run for the run the relay. <laughs> he was like, do you want to do it? I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> of course I'm going to do it. Yeah. Because you know what? Yeah, Harry doesn't say no. <laughs> it's an opportunity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And this, this, as an athlete, you don't get paid the most amount of money. Yeah. So listen, when there's other opportunities that come around, you must take them. Absolutely. Oh, there's risk involved. Yes. But I said to myself, I could walk down the street and get licked down. That was kind of my mentality. So I was like, I'm going to take this. You know what? I'll, I'll be in front of a different audience. Yeah. I'll get that exposure. And I was like, I can actually skate. So I can. I, I skated as a child. Okay. Uh, we used to go to Lee Valley, me and my cousins. So I was like, okay, this could be fun. I get to dress up. I get to do the glamorous. People can do it, see a different side of me. Yeah. So um, my coach wasn't keen on it. Chris wasn't keen on it. But I said, I, I told him. Usually I would ask for his permission to do things. Mm. I said, I'm doing Dancing on Ice. He's like, you came to your own element now. <laughs> it was... <laughs> And I felt that's what happened, Roxana, when I was injured. Because at the time, now, I felt like everyone was just going doing their own things. My agents, they were there, but it's like, I feel like they, what, they were thinking, what can we do with you? Because you're injured. Yes, I've done the mm. odd TV appearance, the punditry. Yeah. So my face was still there. Yes. But then at, at that time, I was reaching out to brands. I was like letting them know, like, do you want to work with me? Do, do, do. Because... It's not all the time you can allow other people to do things for you. No one, you know what I mean? It's like, if you want to do something, you have to make them steps. So Absolutely. I learned that way. So when it, the opportunity came, mm. I made a decision. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. It was like, oh, all right, be careful. Because I was still competing. Mm. But I was like, no, it's going to be part of my training. And I'd done the training as an mm. athlete, as well as the ice skating. I'd done wow. both. Do you know what it is? There's a power in making decision. Yeah. And it gives you respect and quite often we've grown up relying on our coaches our families our people yes. around us telling us what we should be doing mm. and what the tailor-made program is but it's about collaboration it's yep. about understanding it's about reaching different heights but you being your authentic self yeah and you know who you are mm-hmm rather than other people telling you what you should yep. and shouldn't be doing and there's too many risks involved um, who is Perry Shake Straighten? <laughs> who is Perry Shake Straighten? Oh my God, my husband will hate me referring to myself as Perry Shake Straighten. Yeah, he hates, he hates it. <laughs> and I'll stop doing it. I was like, I am hardworking, determined. Um, I'm a mum now. I'm, I'm a mum now. Yes, which I feel like. Whilst I was competing, I was like, I was very selfish. It was all about me. Mm. I say that, but I say that, but my family will probably say different. I've always kind of been there for my family in mm. that sense. Um, but now is that my son comes first. I think priorities change in different yeah. chapters of your life. Oh, yeah. You had to be this way mm-hmm. a certain time in your life yeah. to become who you are and the lessons that you learned. And now that you're mum, you can, you can transfer those, those wisdoms, yep. those knowledge. Yep, and a wife. And, and a, a wife. wife. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Yeah, well, and a wife. So, yeah, <laughs> life has changed, but I still, like, the hard-working person that got me to my achievements in athletics is still there. Mm. Um, you know, I'm now looking for what's, what's next in my life. You know, there's a few things I would love to do. Um, Such as? So, <laughs> whilst I was competing, I always said to myself that I want to run the marathon. Yes. <laughs> and uh, this year I've decided I'm going to take up this challenge. Mm. I'm not doing it competitively. I'm raising money for a charity. Amazing. Um, and I feel like I'm going to raise awareness and share my story, you know, through this charity. Um, but, yeah, it's just like... A different challenge. <laughs> 
yeah, and that, I've never had, I've not had that challenge mm. since, you know, hanging up my spikes. Yeah. So, and I, I really do like it. I think I like a challenge. Mm. I, I think that's what drives us, though. Yeah. In life, and you need goals. Otherwise, you become static. And yep. if you're static, you start dying. Yep. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Yep. Does spirituality play a part in your life? I'll say yes subconsciously, mm-hmm. and I say it like that because um, I don't publicly will, you know, kind of put it on other people. Mm-hmm. But I have a conscious. I know that certain things. I don't know energy. Yes. Uh, my dad's very much spiritual, mm-hmm. so his belief in values have been passed on to me. Um, I was, you know, you know, religiously, I was I'm a Catholic. But I've been to other churches just mm. to kind of just find out who I am and what what do I agree with and some like things mm. like that. But I feel like energy is a big thing mm. for me, whether it be timing of things, what are, you may come across somebody um, at certain times in your path and things happen. I'm like, yeah, this is not consistent coincidence. I believe I'm spiritually, I'm there. Definitely think, things. And not coincidental. No, th- th- there's you were no meant reason. to be there, or you were meant to expose. Well, yes. there's a lesson for you to learn from here. Yeah, that is how I am. Tell us about your the love of your life. Oh, Mike, <laughs> <laughs> my husband. Um, Was he a former teammate? No. Okay, hmm. so he he's younger than me. I, I say that he's younger That's than okay. me. Probably, he's like probably, he's probably that couple of years. That's okay. But, um, Mike represented Great Britain as a, a child, I say child, as a junior. Mm. Um, he went to school in America. That's where we first met each other. Um, I was in a relationship. He was in a relationship. But I was like, when I heard he represented Great Britain, I was like, who? Which? He's not been on my team. I came with that kind of attitude. But then I got the rundown. Yes, born in the UK, represents Great Britain in the high jump, but he's, he lives in the States. Mm. Um, and then he came back to the UK. He came mm. back to the UK. Um, and he reached out to me this time I'd done with the guy that I was with and you know he was trying to go on dates with me and stuff and I was like no no because <laughs> that wasn't my thing yeah <laughs> any relationships I had in the past was because um, it was for, for familiar, uh, familiarity yep. it was that or you know we went to the same school or it's nearby school it just or, occurred yes or yep. university so it was like I don't do dates so I don't know why I'm going to give this one a chance but I did, <laughs> and he was very different in terms of like very um, romantic, you know. Mm. And, um, I was like, oh, I've never had this before, you know, because I'm very much yeah. I was the yeah, the I alpha do, miss, female, yes, Miss Independent. I, I can, can do, do myself. everything. Yeah, I don't, yes. don't want to, yeah, I don't need anyone to do anything for me. But then I had to take a step back, and um, yeah, and he didn't find it intimidating. No, that's good. Yeah, right. That's what I loved. Oh my god! Even though he was like. When he went, when wanted to ask me on a date, he was like, "What do I do with someone who's been <laughs> everywhere and done everything?" Yeah, she knows herself. Yeah. So then he took me to the Royal Opera House, and I was like, "Mate, this is very different." Like, you know, going to Royal Opera. House. We've been together though. Remember, we went to the, mm. we, yeah, we, we went to the Royal Opera House, and I fell asleep. Well, I was oh, watching yeah. this. <laughs> oh my god, I we fell asleep. That's so, <laughs> so we experienced opera. And we're sitting in the box, and Perry's sitting behind me, and you fell asleep. <laughs> and the guy who invited us, he said, did you enjoy the show? And I go, what yeah. And he said, but you were sleeping. And I was no. like, oh, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just say, I was so... <laughs> <sick. laughs> Listen, so yes, oh. my husband decided to take me there. Um, bless him. But uh, yeah, it was an experience. And then years down the line, that's where he actually proposed to me at the same place where we had our first wow. date. So yeah, I mean, he now represents his great um, mm. Nigeria. Yeah. He's still competing as a high jumper. So yeah, uh, we're like his fans now, it's me and nice. my son. It's nice that you have that um, relationship where it's so balanced. Yeah. You harmonise him, he yep. harmonise, you understand each other, yep. you support one another's journey rather than trying to be the show all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, so he was, um, 
he participated in Big Brother Nigeria. Yes, yes. How was that like for you, seeing your husband? <laughs> On a reality TV show. TV show, yes. And how, what was it like dealing with the popularity, the press, the media, the attention? Because that's not normal. That's a not lot normal. of pressure. Um, okay, so my husband went into Big Brother Nigeria uh, after like mm. a, few, a month, I say, after we got married. Wow, so it was so new. Yeah, it was new. Oh. He was freshly married and he went oh. into this reality TV show. And that's what people were like, mm -mm, how can you let your husband go and do that show? But listen, I saw, we both saw, it was an opportunity with Sana. Amazing. And it's like, I've got your back. Is this what you want to do? Do oh my it. God. I love the fact that you had so much trust, faith, and you're on the same page. Same vision. Yeah. So I was in control of his social media, actually, whilst he was in there. Um, that was a lot. It was a lot because you had to keep pushing, pushing, yeah. pushing. And then it's like, um, it, it was like, the way that like, I don't know, socials are, are crazy. And this is the biggest reality TV show in Africa. Yeah. So, you know, I saw the DMs and everything. Oh. And then people started to realise, oh, it's the wife handling it. They were, they were quite respectful. respectful then. They were actually yeah. quite yeah. respectful, I must say. It wasn't okay. too Good. much stress. I think what was stressful was I was training, mm. but still trying to, you know... Do the PR. Do the, hmm. mm. And then I'm in the States, different time zones. So I'm waking up in the middle of the night, I'm like, okay. Because you had to... Posting was a big part of it, you mm. know, because people want to know. They may have missed a clip, so I've had to put up the clips mm. that people know how to vote. Da, da, da. So it was me and two other guys actually working as a team in order to make this happen. Um, it was a lot. I'm mean, at my pictures as well, Roxanne. I'm like, oh, I'm skinny. It's like the stress wow. showed in my body. But I felt fine. Mm. But when I look at my pictures, I'm like, no, you look unhealthy. And that probably was. It was a, it was a lot I was taking on. Mm. Um, so I went over to Nigeria, you know, because um, he got to the final. He mm -hmm. made it to the final. Uh, ended up becoming runner-up, you know. And he was like a rock star, Roxana. Oh, my God. It was crazy. Like, it was people stopping in for photos. Did you ever feel jealous of that? Sometimes I did. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes yeah. I did. Because it's a lot to take on. Yeah. And this is your partner. Thank you. And every single girl is probably like, oh, sign my own. Yes, it was. That's, that, that's exactly how it was. And then, then uh, you know, I had talks with my husband. It's like, it's like... Um, but you stayed grounded. Trust me. And no, no, no one would know how I was really feeling. Yeah. Um, but at times I was like, really? Like, what is this woman doing? Like, mm. you know... That's not like, he not respectful but towards he was, you. Yes, that's the thing. And I was like, okay, this all comes part of it. Because, I mean, I've had... Um, you know, exposure and the press. Yeah. But what my husband was getting, it was another this level. was next level. So anyway, sometimes I was really enjoying it, like yeah. especially get special treatments and stuff, like, you know, you're up in the VIP. Yeah. It, it, that was nice. Mm. Um, and then what come of it, the opportunities that he got, you know, the work and stuff, it was amazing. So to me, like, it was definitely... It was a partnership. Yeah. It was success for both of you rather than just him. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's so important in a relationship mm -hmm. to succeed and to blossom. That's what it, what it needs to yeah. be. Yeah. Wow, we've covered quite a lot of your journey. I want... What is the biggest lesson that you learnt through life, through athletics? Um... If you want something done, there's no one's going to have that heart and... Um, passion that you would have. that you have. I love that. That's the one. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. On that note, <laughs> thank you for sharing your story with us. Oh no problem. Thank, thank you. you. Thank me. you to Perry for joining us in the ring. Yippee.